Good morning, everybody. All right, this is the second day for the user-defined material. Uh, is there any question or comment before I start today? As uh, I told you yesterday, uh, if you have any question or comment, uh, simply uh, unmute, yourself, un unmute yourself and uh, speak up. Or you can basically type your uh, question in the chat. So it's up to you. So today we're going to talk about vectorization. So we left basically from yesterday. to this page we talked about this and vectorize subroutine that's what uh, we were doing yesterday in which we stopped uh, so yesterday i showed you a very simple example for elastic user defined material and we did it for shell element and uh, solid element and it was a scalar code now, sometimes uh, uh, we would like to do a vectorized code. As I told you, in the development, you really want to start with a scalar first. And then once you have a scalar code, then, uh, then spend a week or two in order to vectorize it, because it's not really a big deal to vectorize a code. And you want to do that is for a little bit faster operation. So conceptually, vectorization is straightforward. Each scalar operation that is normally executed once for an element is repeated for each element in the group. And this group is actually a function of what kind of uh, uh, platform you are doing your user defined. So for example, for PC, double precision, the length of that vector is 136. For other machine, it's something else. I have seen it ranging from 96 all the way to 528. Uh, uh, so that depends on the architecture of the machine. So since we're doing the operation for the same group, this means that each scalar is repeated by an array and the operation is put into a do loop. The data are passed in and out in large blocks, typically, as I said, it depends on the machine, but 128 is a good representation. So each entry in an array of a length correspond to a single material point. All material points in the same block have the same material name and belong to the same element type. So the vectorized subroutine is slightly faster. If you're gonna do vectorized code branching out or inside the loop is not allowed. So I can't have an if statement into the loop and go out of the loop. I cannot do that. Then you basically violate the vectorization. So the vectorized subroutines basically have a V at the end of the name. We had UMAT41 to UMAT50. Now we're gonna have UMAT 41V to UMAT 50V. So you can see that the argument of the subroutine changes as well. It's not like uh, the one that we did scalar, it's different. So CM is the same like before, which is the material constant array. These are the properties that you send to the subroutine. If you remember, the strain increments were EPS. Now the strain increment is D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6. This is epsilon 1, 1, all the way to epsilon 1, 3. Also before we had the stress to be sig, just one array. Now we have sig 1 through sig 6. So that's different in the scalar code. EPS, uh, PS, that's a plastic strain, same like before, history variables. And then we have LFT and LLT. So I told you for PC, the length of the vector array is one 
136. So LFT is 1, LLT is 136. So what Alice Dana does, it sends 136 elements for each integration point all into one uh, uh, one, uh, one shot or one send basically to the subroutine. And you need to do everything that you have to do on these 136 element in a do loop. DT1 size, that's delta T, kappa she correction factor, element type, total time, temperature, failure flag, CRV is the load curve you sending it, CMA is additional material so you have 48 here another 48 here and qmat is for thermal material element size and id of the element so as you can see the only difference here is really the fact that the strains now are each component before it was an array now each component is an array so d1 the array from 1 to 136 that's the strain epsilon xx for element one to element 136 all send at the same time to the user defined subroutine and so forth and then of course we have dimensioning we declare all these dimensions and now you can see uh, you can see that d1 is an array and that star is basically 1 to 136 for a pc for some other machine it's a different length so you have all the decoration. And now, if you remember, let me remind you. So let's go back to see the scalar one. So the scalar one, I calculated the uh, volumetric strain. I calculate the pressure. Then I calculate the stresses. Sig uh, one, two, all the way to six. That's for each integration point, each element at a time. Now, what we do in the vectorized code, we have a do loop. So do I LFT to LLT from one to 136 for, for example, uh, 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 for a PC. And then we calculate the volumetric strain, we calculate the pressure, and we calculate the stress components for each element. So that do loop, we are doing the stresses for all these elements into the vector array at the same time. So basically, this is what vectorization is. Uh, as you can see, is really not complicated in terms of the program, uh, but you don't want to start with a vectorized code to do development. It's advisable to do scalar, uh, get your bugs out, validate, verify your uh, your um, user-defined material and then spend a week or two in order to vectorize the code for slightly uh, faster operation. All right, so any question about vectorization?